And so the shortest day came and the year ended. And everywhere down the centuries of the snow white world came people dancing, singing to welcome back the light. They lighted candles in the winter trees. They hung their homes with evergreen. They burned beseeching fires all through the night to keep the year alive. When the new day sunshine blazed awake, they shouted, rejoicing. Through all across the centuries, you can hear them echoing behind us if you just listen. All the long echoes sing the same delight, this shortest day and longest night, as promise awakens in a sleeping land. They carol, feast, give thanks, dearly love their friends, and hope for peace. And so do we here now, this year, and every year. Welcome, Solstice. And what a joy it is to welcome you to this celebration of the winter solstice. We gather on this night in the early darkness and refreshing cold of winter to be together in the dark, to appreciate the restfulness and the peace that comes in darkness, and also to recognize that this is the point when the light is reborn. Gathered here, we draw a circle of community and recognize that the darkness is where we hold seeds of hopes and dreams to come. Round and round, the earth is turning, turning always round till morning and from morning round till night. In the northern hemisphere, the sun is peaking lower in the sky and setting sooner. Each night grows longer as we await this longest night, the winter solstice. Tonight, we celebrate the return of hope to our land as our planet experiences the first slow turn toward greater daylight. Soon, we will welcome the return of the sun and the coming of spring. As we do so, let us remember and embrace the positive, enriching aspects of winter's darkness. To lure the sun back to us, we light candles, burn the Yule log, decorate our houses with light. Many religions have a sun child who is born this time of year, a child who lights the way back to spring, back to life. But it is not just children newly born who carry the light and give renewed hope for this world. Each and every one of us carries that light. As we gather this evening, hold in your heart. How do you carry the light? How will you carry the flame of hope, love, and justice with you into a new year? How will you carry the light?
If you will rise now in body and or spirit and join us in the calling of the spirits. Please turn to the brightening east. I'm going to see if you guys know. <laughs> Spirit of the east, home of the rising sun, we welcome you into our circle this night. We feel the embrace of the spring winds stirring our minds. We hear the soft rustle of air through leaves. We feel life renewing itself again and again. Here, knowledge is born on light, swift wings. We kindle this fire today in the east and invoke the spirit of air. Flow within us, wind of life. Let there be truth and knowledge. Spirit of the air, be with us tonight. And if you will, please turn to the blazing south. Spirit of the south, spirit of the noonday sun. Okay. I thought I was facing the wrong way. I was like, what? We welcome you into our circle this night. We feel the blast of summer wind igniting passion. We hear the sharp crackle of dancing flames. Here, transformation reigns. Here, cleansing fires temper and renew. The sun at the noon of his majesty illuminates the world and ignites the spark of life within us all. We kindle this fire today in the south and invoke the spirit of fire. Flow within us, O flame of life. Let there be passion and inspiration. Spirit of fire, be with us tonight. Please turn to the watery west. Spirit of the west, spirit of failing light of the setting sun, we feel the caress of autumn wind awakening dreams. We hear the ebbing and flowing of the sea. Here intuition reigns. Here emotion flickers in the depths of the dark spring. The well fills with the waters of the bosom of the earth. The cup overflows with deep wisdom. We kindle this fire today in the west and invoke the spirit of water. Flow within us, O well of life. Let there be wisdom and intuition. Spirits of the water, be with us tonight. And now if you will please turn to the frozen north Spirit of the north, spirit of the star-strewn midnight sky. We feel the bite of winter wind chilling heart and bone. We hear the crunch of snow beneath our feet. Here winter grasps the land. Here darkness reigns. Dreams are born and nurtured. The seeds of peace are sown. The visions of a new world are nourished. We kindle this fire today in the north and invoke the spirit of earth. Grow within us, O tree of life. Let there be strength and courage. Spirits of the earth, be with us tonight. And now we will light, and now we will light our chalice, symbolizing our center. Please join together in the words printed in your order of service. I'll give you a second to grab those. In this small flame dwell the beacon light of lanterns, adding travelers home. The warmth of hearth fires tended through the generations the transforming energy of furnace and the power and life of our sun. May these blessings, warmth and light and life-giving energy be kindled in each of us. And now if you will take a moment before we join in song 
to turn and wish a hearty solstice greetings to those around you. first story today is the Bag of Light and Warmth, a solstice tale from the Slavi people of Canada. The light on which everyone on earth most depends is the sun. For the people of the far north who spend winter in constant darkness, the return of the sun is a constant preoccupation. Many people have told visions of a story in which animals help return light to the earth. In this story from the Slavi people of Canada, the sun is kept in a bag by bears who hibernate through the deepest winters of winter months and who will not allow the warmth and light back to the world. Once long ago, before there were any people, there was a very long winter. The sun was hidden behind black clouds, and the snow fe just fell and fell. After three years of this, the animals got together to discuss what they should do. As they gathered in council, they agreed that it was because of the lack of warmth that they were all so cold and hungry. 
but no one had any ideas about what they could do to change things for the better. Then the sharp-eyed wolf noticed that there were no bears of the council. Perhaps the bears know something that we don't. I wonder whether they're keeping all the warmth for themselves. So it was decided that seven animals should go and find the bears, the sharp wolf, the quick fox, the swift bobcat, the no nosy wolverine, the wise pike, and the secret of mouse, and the strong dogfish should go out and seek out the bears. All of the animals knew that the bears lived somewhere in the upper world, but how were they to find them? The wise pike suggested that all of the questing animals sit around the fire and chant for help. As the different animals howled, barked, growled, snuffled, squeaked and bobbled, bubbled in their own voices, their song rose up like the wind, shaping the smoke from the fire into a pathway that enabled them to rise upwards and pass through a hole in the sky. In the upper world, there came, they came to a big lake and a hut beside it. The animals went in and found two young bear cubs huddling by a fire. Where's your mother? They asked the bear cubs. Mother's gone hunting, they replied. The animals looked around the hut and noticed lots of bags hanging from poles. The swift bobcat asked about the bag nearest him. What's in this bag? Oh, mother keeps the rain in that one, said the bear cubs. What's in this one, asked the secretive mouse. Oh, that one is full of winds. And what's in this one, asked the quick fox. That one has got fog in it, replied the little bears. Nosy Wolverine sniffled loudly at the bag nearest to him. What about this one here? Oh, we can't tell you that. Mother keeps that one secret, and we're not allowed to tell. You can tell us, said the mouse, sweetly encouraging. We're your friends. The little bears put their paws over their noses, remembering how hard their mother would cuff them. Mother would be angry with us for telling you. Swift Bobcat put his hand to one so head to one side and said, But how would she know? We wouldn't tell her. The bear cubs were confused by this, but the animals were all very friendly, so it seemed safe enough. In that bag she keeps the light and the warmth, they said shyly. Well, thank you kindly, said the sharp wolf, grinning. The visitors all went outside to have a council meeting and decide what to do. We need a diversion so that the bag can be stolen, said the wise pike. And we need to make sure that the, bear won't run out, the bears won't run after us too fast once we've got the bag, said the mouse, who had shorter legs than the rest of them. <laughs> the secretive mouse got up on the quick fox's back, and the fox ran to where the mother bear's canoe was moored on the other side of the lake. Mouse immediately set to gnawing through a good part of the paddle. Then the three of them watched and waited. Their patience was soon rewarded. The bear came running into view around the other side of the lake. Quick as a flash, swift bobcat changed himself into a plump caribou. The bear smelled the caribou and began to yell for her children to come and help her catch some food. The cubs tumbled out of the hut and ran for her. Everything was happening just as the animals had hoped. The caribou bobcat picked up his legs and began to lead the bears deep into the forest. As soon as the bears were out of the sight, the other animals unhooked the bag of light and warmth and ran off with it. Doubling back swiftly to the lake, the caribou bobcat launched himself into the waters and swam across. The mother bear rushed after him. Soon, she told the cubs to wait for her on the bank, and then she jumped into her canoe and set, af set off after the caribou bobcat. But after she had taken just a few strokes, her paddle broke in two pieces. She fell headfirst into the river, and down went the canoe. Bobcat changed back into his own form when he reached the other side of the lake. Quickly now, let's run before she can follow. The bag of warmth and light was very heavy, and the animals had to take turns to drag it back to the hole where they had come into this world. They began to pull it more and more slowly until they could almost feel the bear's breath on the back of their necks. Finally, the dogfish, who had done nothing yet, 
grabbed the bag with his mouth and pulled it through the hole with a shake of his strong back. The bag and all the animals fell rapidly through the hole, tumbling down the path of smoke back into their own world below. As soon as they regained their breath, they tore open the bag. To everyone's relief, warmth and light rushed out and spread in all directions. Ice and snow began to melt. The black cloud started to dissolve and the sun at last came out again. But the ice and snow were melting so fast that it caused a terrible flood. All the rivers flowed to the seas so quickly that the seas rose all over the world. The only thing left sticking out of the water was the tallest tree in the world. The animals climbed onto its mighty branches and called for help. Deep in the depths of the sea, a giant fish heard the, their call and rose to the surface. It drank up the floodwaters until it had swollen to the size of a mountain. And there it remained as a great mountain forever afterwards. So the sun dried up the land, the trees and flowers began to bloom again, and summer was able to return to replace the winter cold. And that was how the animals brought the bag of light and warmth back to the earth. We'll now sing hymn number 1063, the winter solstice chant. seated. I invite you to enter with us into a time of myth and legend to hear the tale of two immortal brothers, <laughs> twins, as alike and as different as day and night. No one knows which of the two is older. Why, I am poor. No, I am. For both are said to have existed since the dawn of time. In frosty darkness I am born, and in frosty darkness I will die, only to be reborn again and again. I rule over autumn and winter, the times of harvest, of aging, of wisdom, I am the Holly King, he of the... And I am the Oak King. In warm luminescence, I am conceived. And in warm luminescence, I die, only to be reborn again and again and again. <laughs> I rule over summer, the times of planting, of growth, of learning, and of renewal. I am the Oak King, he of the... You already said that. Like many brothers, the Oak King and the Holly King sometimes don't get along. He calls me Nate. He steals my stuff. Sometimes they don't know how to share. Why should I share? I'm the king. For now. Sometimes they even fight. Fight? He kills me every summer to steal my crown. Why? He's plotting to off me right now! Only because you steal my crown every winter. 
Fortunately, even the most stubborn person can learn to get along with others. I'm not stubborn. It's not my fault he's a twit. I'll be nice, but only if he apologizes. Fortunately, even families that have been estranged for years... Centuries. Millennia. Don't correct me. For millennia can be reconciled. You wish. It begins with learning to recognize the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Ah, his only dignity lies in the crown he gives me each winter, and man, it is so easy to take it from him. <laughs> dignity? He's about as dignified as a chimpanzee screeching for a banana. Why, you take that back. It begins with learning to respect even those you disagree with. Oh, I respect them. And by respect, I mean loathe with the fiery passion of a thousand burning suns. That was uncalled for. And once you learn to affirm each other's worth and respect one another, you can work on ways to overcome your differences. Oh. Ha! <laughs> really effective ways. My favorite begins with a club and ends with a thud. Ways that do not involve violence. Oh. We're gonna try one of those nonviolent ways today. We are? Do well, I have to? Do you want a turn at wearing the crown? He's just gonna try and hurt me to take it. Well, it's my turn. He's not going to hurt you. He's not? I'm not. No. You're not. You are going to have a little contest. Ooh, like a duel. No, not a duel. Oh, darn. You may notice that behind you there are two drums. I like drums. I'm really good at drums. Yeah, well, I'm better. <laughs> you wish. Your Majesties, please, and thank you. Oak King, please choose a drum. Because he's the incumbent. Not for long. Okay, now Oak, please choose a drum. All right, let's do this. Okay, not so fast. Ours is an interdependent world, and those of us living in it should have a say in how the world is run. So I would like to ask all of you to pick a team Team Holly or Team Oak. You can participate by clapping, stomping, cheering along with your chosen king. Now, Holly King, you are the current ruler of the known universe, so your side gets to go first. Ha! We've so got this. All right, now the Oak King. Follow me, my good and loyal Oaklings. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna speed it up a little bit, but remember to take turns. Holly? <laughs> and Oak. Oak. Curses. I must admit defeat. Head over that trap crown tree, boy. Never. Ha ha, you get the crown, but only on one condition. Tradition, mortal? Yep. Fine. Fine. What condition? In six months, you will give your brother a chance to win the crown back. And Holly King, you are not going to hurt him to try and get it. Another drum battle? I can agree to that. Good. Now just give him the crown. Fine. All hail the Oak King. Thank you for helping keep the wheel of the year turning and ushering in this waning season. And thank you to Rees and Kian for playing along so well.
Thank you to Heather and Linda and our teen choir for the beautiful music this evening. Now our next story is called The Wish Tree. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Charles who wanted to find a wish tree. His brother said, there is no such thing. His sister said, there's no such thing. But Charles said, what do you think, Boggin? And Boggin thought, surely there must be such a thing. So the next morning, Charles and Boggin set forth. His brother said, bring a map. His sister said, don't forget a compass. But Charles and Boggin were already well on their way into the woods. They had the whole day ahead of them, the whole day to find a wish tree. Up, up to the top of a hill they climbed and down, down to a frosty meadow they slid. Where Charles went, Boggin followed. Where Boggin went, Charles followed. Charles and Boggin did not see the wish tree, but they did see Squirrel, who was puzzling over how to get some hazelnuts to his home. Charles realized they could help, and help they did. Slow, slow through the snow they went, and hush, hush past Bear's den they crept. Where Charles went, Boggin followed. Where Boggin went, Charles followed. Charles and Boggin did not see a wish tree anywhere, but they did see Beaver, who was busy gathering birchwood to bring to his lodge. Charles realized they could help, and help they did. Slide, glide across the ice they slipped, past a few logs and around a bend. Where Charles went, Boggin followed. Where Boggin went, Charles followed. The wish tree was nowhere to be found. But they did find Fox, who was late getting berries to her burrow. Charles realized they could help, and help they did. Now they had less than half the day ahead of them, less than half a day to find a wish tree. Along the way, there were many friends to find, many friends to help. Rabbit, owl, deer, bird, and mouse all received the care of a friend. As the light began to leave the sky, Charles said, we may need to move a little faster, Boggin. But Charles and Boggin were moving very slowly now. Their shadows were growing longer. The whole day was almost behind them. Boggin, Charles said, I am tired. I cannot search any longer. Charles lay down to sleep as his friends gathered near. They realized that it was now their turn to help, and help they did. When Charles awoke, it was snowing. It was snowing on squirrel, and it was snowing on beaver, and it was snowing on fox, and it was snowing on everyone. For a moment, Charles could not see through the falling snow, but then he said, Oh, look! See, Boggin? It was just as we thought. Charles wrote his wish on a piece of paper and tied it around a branch of the wish tree. The snow was falling more gently now. The animals had prepared a feast with hazelnut souffle, a pot of birch tea, biscuits made of berries. Charles and Boggin celebrated their friends until it was time to be on their way. The moon was glowing brightly all the way home. And I now invite you into the giving and receiving of our evening's offering. As you'll notice in your order of service, our offering is dedicated entirely to our eviction prevention program, and we thank you for your generosity.
We have come together from our many homes to join in this celebration of darkness and light. We have come together out of the cold to fill this place with songs and stories and the warmth of people willing to share of themselves during this glorious season. Let us now join together in filling this sacred space with light and wishes, using our own energy, our power, our hope and goodwill to encourage the sun to return once again. You received a small piece of paper on your way in. We invite you to write a wish that you have for our world, for your own life, for those you love. In this season of wishes, what do you wish? If you had but one wish, what would it be? Take your time thinking about it. So much is at stake. An end to all suffering, a stop to all violence, a solution to poverty and all its ills. Would you wish for love, for forgiveness and healing? Would you wish the world joy or the wisdom to change? Would you wish to understand everything or to know less than you do? Take your time thinking about it. So much is at stake. For a wish is a thought and a thought is an idea. An idea leads to commitment and a commitment cries out for action. A wish can be a dangerous thing, something daring, and it need not be witnessed by the stars to come true. Let us be glad that we are not given just one wish in our lives, but many. Let us be grateful not for wishful thinking, but for the discipline of thoughtful wishing that can lead to change. So what would your wish be? When you come forward to light your candle, and the candles are up here at the table, you can give your wish to one of our ushers and we will hang it on our very own wish tree for you. Here in the darkness of our sacred space, let us feel the warmth of community, knowing we are not alone. For in the quiet shadow is the glow of life within us all. Let us know in the darkness the dreams within all and the gift that each one of us bears. We are each a small flame, a diminutive light. What a wondrous gift to see another's glow. Let us be in awe at this moment as we bring our wishes together and our lights envelop this room as our hopes for peace and goodwill fill this night. We invite you now to come forward, bringing your wishes, lighting solstice candles, helping us fill this room with light and love and hope.
spirit of winter rests, help us to enjoy your peace. Remind us to pause during this season. Remind us to wish, to hope, to dream. Grant us awareness, keep our gratitude fresh each day. May the songs in our heart be blessings and insights to us and to others. And may compassion always shine forth from the depths of our hearts. Our closing hymn will be hymn number 235, Deck the Hall. No, no plurals. <laughs> night for the spirits who joined us in our circle as we release them now. Spirit of the north, power of earth, we thank you for your gifts of growth and nurturing. We ask for your blessing on this solstice night. Spirit of the north, hail and farewell. Spirit of the west, power of water, we thank you for your gifts of cleansing and healing. We ask for your blessing on this solstice night. Spirit of the West, hail and farewell. Spirit of the South, power of air, we thank you for your gifts. No, we thank you for your gifts of passion and transformation. We ask for your blessings on this solstice night. Spirit of the South, hail and farewell. Spirit of the East, power of air, we thank you for your gifts of clarity and inspiration. We ask for your blessing on this solstice night. Spirits of the East, Hail and farewell. The circle is open, but never broken. Merry meet, merry part, merry meet again. On this winter's night, we wish you a season of love and light. May you hear the dreams, the hopes, the shout within you, waiting to be reborn. Blessed be, and go in peace. Mm -hmm.